Hey everybody, welcome back to Linear Algebra with me for the last time this week. Um, so, last time we talked about the characteristic polynomial and we had to factor it in order to find our eigenvalues. But, question, what if it doesn't factor so nicely? Like, it was hard to factor, it was not necessarily pleasant, but the result was always nice. So, like, if you ended up with this in your factorization, we know how to deal with that, that's fine. But what if we encountered something like that? Like, what do we do with that? Um, I feel pretty confident that you guys remember this. I is equal to the square root of negative 1. However, I can't really make many assumptions about what you know about negative numbers because it's not actually in the curriculum for anything preceding this class. <laughs> A little awkward, <laughs> but that's fine. Um, but that's the big idea, is what, what are we going to do when we encounter something like that? So let's jump in. Let's just try an example, see where it takes us. We're going to find the determinant for this matrix. So we're going to say debt A minus lambda I, which is going to be negative lambda 1, negative 1, negative lambda. And then, thank goodness, this is a very easy determinant to compute. Then, uh, sorry, I have to keep my own minus sign straight. Can't do it. Oh no, we encountered exactly the problem that I was worried about encountering. Shocker. Okay, but let's go with it. Let's, let's try. So now, lambda equals or lambda squared equals negative 1. So then lambda equals plus or minus square root of negative 1. Lambda equals plus or minus i. OK, remember you have to do your plus or minus, because when you take the square root, you get plus or minus, because it could be, oh, 3 squared is 9, but so is negative 3 squared. Little algebra reminders. Let, we found our eigenvalues. Let's see if we can find our eigenvectors. Okay, so lambda equals, we'll do the positive i case first. So if we plug this in, we have i negative 1, 1 i. No, negative i's because it's negative lambda. And then you've got 0, 0. Here's our augmented matrix. We're ready to solve. Ooh, who wants to do that? Um, yeah, trying to combine these is not pretty. So let's take this slow. We're just going to multiply row 1 by i. So then negative i times i is going to be negative i squared, which is, so remember, i squared is negative 1, so negative, negative 1. So that's going to be a positive 1 up there, and then a minus i, 1 minus i. <sighs> Thank goodness they don't look terrible. So then row 2 minus row 1 that's now super easy. 1 minus i, 0, 0, 0. OK. So we got to a place. This is a thing. We're fine. Um, let's figure out what v is. So v2 is um, free. So then v1 is equal to i times v2. OK. So far, everything's OK. So that means our overall vector is um, going to be i1 times v2. And then I'm going to put the little subscript on my lambda. So lambda 1 will then have eigenvector v1 equals i1 if we let 
little v2 equal 1. Okay, so we did it. We found, we found an eigenvalue or an eigenvalue and its eigenvector. They were complex, but you know, it wasn't so bad. Let's do it for the other one and we'll be done. So this is positive i, negative 1, 1, negative i. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply that top row by i. And this time we know i squared is negative 1. And that's going to be a minus i, so then 1 minus i, so then r2 plus r1, Sorry, I made a mistake. This would have been a plus one i, which would make that a plus i. Okay. That gives us a row of zeros. I was just like, wait, it doesn't have an eigenvector. That's wrong. Okay. Has an eigenvector. Life as we know it can resume. V2 is free. So then V1 is going to be equal to negative i V2. So then our v vector is negative i, 1, v2. So then the v2 vector is this. It's one of the options. Remember, you could pick v2 to be something like 300 for some reason, but 1 is easy. We like 1. All right, we did it. We found the eigenvalues, we found the complex eigenvectors that go with them. Um, it wasn't so bad. I'm going to ask you guys to recall something for me. Complex conjugate, maybe this, this is where I can't assume that people know things. So we've got z equals a plus bi, so that would be like a full... Um, complex number. It's got a real part and imaginary part. We say that it's complex conjugate is same thing, just you flip the sign for the part that has the imaginary i on it. You don't flip the sign for a, just the i. That's the, what a conjugate is. With this in mind, I want to compare what we got last time. So we have lambda 1 was i, lambda 2 was negative i. That means lambda 2 was the complex conjugate of lambda 1. Then we've got v1 had this i component on the top, where v2 had this negative i component on the top. So v2 was the complex conjugate of v1. And goodness, that is awkward looking notation, isn't it? But it's not enough to like say this always holds, but this could help cut down on some computations if this holds. If we can just find one of them and then get, we're guaranteed the other one, that's great. So, can we do this in general? Why, yes, we can. Thank you for asking. If A is an n by n matrix with real entries, it is important that it is real. Um, then if we have a complex eigenvalue lambda with eigenvalue V, we know that the complex conjugate of lambda is an eigenvalue for a, and it has the eigenvector, sorry, v with a bar. So it's going to have the complex conjugate. So let me erase so that you can see what lived. Just filled with typos. There we go. Um, 
Okay. How do we prove this? Like, let's start with what we know. We know lambda is an eigenvalue of A. So pause, think about, if you wanna practice your proofing skills, which that was the weak question on exam one, shocker, uh, so proofs are always the weak point. If you wanna try, pause. This is a good place to try. So what does it mean to be an eigenvalue of A? It means, um, yep, got ahead of myself, this. That's all it means. So then we're trying to get to the complex stuff. So we can take the complex conjugate of the left and right, because if we just switch the sign on the complex part, on both sides, they're still equal. And then this may or may not be something that's more, uh, that's um, also obvious to you guys. But complex conjugates do distribute over multiplication. And then last step, so this isn't quite the same. We have this thing sitting on A. So A, had real entries. This is why it's important. So if you have a number, so like z equals a plus i b, that's where you switch the sign. If there is no complex part, so it's real, all this goes away. So then when you do the complex conjugate, it stays the same. There is no complex part to switch the sign on. So using the fact that A has real entries, we now have this. So this is a true equation, which means lambda bar is an eval of A because it has the evec. V bar. Done. All right. So we have a cool theorem. Let's take it for a spin. Let's see this thing work in action. We want the eigenvalues. We want the eigenvectors. Shocker. Here we go. Det A minus lambda I equals, that's going to be 5 minus lambda, negative 2, 1, minus lambda cool so then that's going to be 5 minus lambda times 3 minus lambda minus 1 negative 2 15 minus 8 lambda Okay. So, oh no, how do we factor this? Eh, you don't. Remember quadratic formula? Oh, reach way back. So lambda equals negative b, so negative negative 8, plus or minus negative 8 squared, minus 4 ac, all over 2a. So let's simplify this, um, and then I would put 4 times 17 into a calculator. Don't do that behind by hand. Nobody wants to do that. So then 8 plus or minus, so that's going to be 2i. So 4 plus or minus i. And what do you know? We got lambda and the complex conjugate of the lambda. It does indeed seem to be working. So let's go after the positive one first. So if we plug that in, we need, now need to solve for his eigenvector. So that's gonna be one minus, oops, i, and one negative two 
negative 1 minus i, 0, 0. And then let's go ahead. I know how to get rid of it. I can get rid of this guy by doing r1 minus 1 minus i, r2. That part's no problem. What is a problem is figuring out what's going to happen here because multiplying that together. Just take it slow. Write it down somewhere else. Um, there we go. Then remember FOIL. It's our friend. So negative 1, negative i, positive i. Oops. That's no, positive i. So plus i squared. So negative 1 plus negative 1. Negative 2. Okay. So that means cool. When we multiply this row, we get a negative 2 here. So when we do r1 minus and then we get negative 2 so we do indeed get a 0 there thank goodness okay delete so then now we're down to v1 equals 1 plus i v2, and v2 is free. So then our v vector looks like 1 plus i, 1 times v2. So then we're going to pick v2 to be 1 again. And our first eigenvalue is going to be v1. 1 plus i, 1. Oh. There we go. Okay. So now, that was not entirely pleasant the first time around. So thank goodness we don't have to do it the second time around. V2 is just the complex conjugate of v1 because note lambda 2 is indeed the complex conjugate of lambda 1 so then if we go to the entries you've got one complex conjugate of one is just itself it's just real and then one plus i switches to a one minus i and you're done. So there you go. We can still deal with finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors if they are not altogether pretty. It's totally okay. We do know a little bit about dealing with complex numbers, and that's enough to get us there. So that is all for now, and I'll see you all next time.